In this video, I'm going to take you with me as I attempt my very first long project. 40 hours imaging the same target. It will require a lot of planning and a lot of clear nights. I'll tell you what I used, why, and we'll also go to the desert just once so we can compare what our frames look like with and without crazy light pollution. Actually, I wish I didn't go because I almost died. Finally, I'll go over what it's like to process 40 hours of data and we'll submit the image for APOD. Let's go! So one thing I've always wanted to do was take a long picture, like 40 hours for example, of one target which was pretty much impossible for us since we didn't have a house. But now we do and we have a backyard. So I'm going to, for the very first time, um, take a very, very long uh, you know, image of one specific target. So I'm going to choose one that is not often photographed and one that has a lot of narrowband uh, gases in it. And I'm going to pick the area around the star Seder. So I'm going to be using the small mid telescope why? Because once I put everything on here, I can easily carry out everything out there uh, in the backyard without having to remove any cables or without having to remove the camera. So all the angle will be the same. Uh, I can leave the, uh, the filter as is. I can leave the, the guiding camera as is and the focus is going to be pretty much around there. So it's going to be very exciting. Um, I can't wait to start. And I'm going to aim for 20 hours of HA. Um, 10 hours of O3 and 10 hours of sulfur. It was time to take the rig out for the very first time. I will be doing this about 10 to 12 times before being done with this project. This little scope had no idea what it was in for. I took care of balancing the telescope and attaching all the cables. That is the only time I did this until the very end as I never took anything off in between. Then it was all ready for this epic journey. Alright, so I have the mid right behind me. Um, hopefully I won't have to move the uh, rotation of the camera at all for the whole process, so for like several weeks. And uh, yeah, we'll see. So what I plan to do is I'm going to take a bunch of HA shots first from the backyard. I'm going to aim around maybe 120 in total at 5 minutes each. And um, what I plan to do next is, if there is like you know some quarter moon or like half moon, uh, I'll do HA. But if it's like a full clear night with no moon at all, I will do O3 and S2. Um, what I want to know is, um, what kind of difference can we see between the desert and home? So bottle nine at home versus bottle four or three from the desert with the stock ZWO filters in our band. So I believe HA is going to be very easy from here. But O3 and S2, I'm gonna pick one of those two, um, probably O3, and we'll do you know one batch from home and one batch from the desert, and then we can compare both single frames. So Seder, uh, the star itself, and of course the nebulosity around it is going to rise, uh, I believe around midnight. Uh, so it rises around 8 p.m., but to be high enough in the sky to be imaged, I usually aim around 25 degrees in altitude, and. Um, if we center it in on Sky Safari here, I can see at 11.14 p.m. is going to be at an altitude of uh, 27 degrees. So at 11 p.m. it will be per pretty much perfect to image already. So I plan to start later right at 11 p.m.
Okay, so I am centered the way I want it. Everything is uh, focused. Now I'm doing the uh, auto guiding calibration, and then we'll be good to go. Exciting! The first light of this big project coming through. And here we go. The first night of many. I also used my other rig to finish imaging M17 with a triad filter. It turned out pretty good, although it still needs some more data. So to make this video more interesting, I decided to go to the desert by myself and take some O3 shots, so we can compare it with our backyard O3 shots. We'll see how much of a difference the sky makes even in narrowband. I brought the Orion 8-inch astrograph as well and imaged M13 in the meantime. I won't lie, I wish I did not come alone because of that. Packing up two rigs took forever and I'm telling you now, I am never doing that again if I'm not with a friend. I really got super scared and almost could not move when I saw those spiders. Okay, I just jumped like hell. I jumped like hell. What is that? Oh no. I'm so scared. Please tell me it's the cricket, not the spider. Please tell me it's not a spider. Please tell me it's not a spider. Please. Oh no. Oh no, no. Alright, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. So I guess I'm going to bring like a thousand baby spiders home. No, 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 please don't. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, no, no. No, 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 no. So I have no choice. I need to find the spider and get it out. Okay, I have no choice. I have no choice. There's no way. It's impossible. There's no way to find it. It's going to come home with me and it's going to make a thousand more babies. <sighs> I can't find it. I cannot find it. Famous last words. The whole drive back home, I thought the spider would jump on me from behind any second. So anyway, the O3 data looked much better from the desert than from the city. You can see a comparison of two single shots here. On the left is from the backyard, bottle 9. On the right is from the desert, bottle 3. That was the only time I imaged away from home. All the other nights were taken from the backyard. It was fun to just carry everything out, although I almost tripped a few times.
So for the processing, um, there was no way I could stack everything at once because the computer would just crash. So what I did was I picked the best reference frame um, out of all of them. And using that same frame, I stacked each channel individually. There were some nights where the camera kind of moved a bit, uh, so the angle was a bit different. So what I did was I just picked one that was, you know, in between kind of all of them. So there would be less, uh, not much cut on each corner. So, so I stacked everything and then I realized on the O3 stack that Seder looked horrible. I mean, look at that. It looks terrible. So that kind of scared me, to be honest. But once I stacked those three channels into a RGB image, that weird halo went away. So I was kind of relieved. So as you can see, the stacked image here looks pretty decent, uh, pretty promising. So that was great. So what I'm doing right now is I am drizzling all the data. So it's not fun at all, it takes forever. But for me, I think drizzling is very important. So in total right now, I have 19 hours and 40 minutes of HA. I was aiming for 20 hours. But I, don't, I don't want to set up just for like, you know, five, four or five frames. So it's almost 20 hours of HA. And then we have 121 frames out of 120 planned for all three, which is a total of 10 hours and five minutes. And lastly, S2. I was planning for 120 frames, but I have right now 139 frames. So that's 11 hours and 35 minutes. So in total, we have pretty much more than 40 hours. So let's see how it turns out. And I hope it's going to be worth it. I really hope. That's a lot of nights uh, spent doing this one target. So I can finally take this cup of this mount for, I mean, after like so many days. So I release you. So here is the final image of the Seder region. I think it looks great. Um, within it, you can kind of see the butterfly nebula. Which is framed just right on the top left corner. And you can also see what I like to call the dove nebula. Uh, which is kind of part of the uh, butterfly nebula. It's behind its right wing and um, it looks like a dove to me, it looks like a bird. So anyway, I also tried to do a crazy version, like a blue version. So here is um, a much more blue, cold and sci-fi version of the, uh, the image. And I think it's great. So now I just put the Atlas mount in the closet and I now plan to do another project, another 40 hour image, this time using a bigger mid, the 115mm Apo, and this Mighty Mount. So both of those guys are gonna be busy in the next few weeks uh, imaging the Pelican Nebula for 40 hours. Let's see how it turns out. So before I end this video, I'm gonna tell you guys four tips about um, you know, how to capture the same image for several nights. So number one, pick a target that excites you. So make sure you really are in love with the, uh, the object you're imaging. For us, Seder is kind of, you know, blah, blah, but there is so much gas around it that we really fell in love with it really quick. Number two, use equipment that's very light. So for example, we would have had so much more trouble carrying out this guy and the big scope here outside every time. So make sure you, if you have one, use a small scope like the Mi 70, it's perfect, it's very light and tiny, so we don't have to, you know, take it out every time. Number three, use narrowband filters instead of LRGB filters if you're imaging from home. If you're imaging from home, you can do, you know, just regular broadband, but narrowband is much easier, uh, you know, to capture. And then last tip, if you're imaging narrowband, if you plan to image also when there is a moon outside, like for example, if you don't have many clear nights, and you really want to, to image on a night where the moon is out, try to do HA when the moon is out. 
and keep O3 and S2 when there is no moon. Because O3 and S2, they both let more light through the filter than HA. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to, before we end the video, I'm going to really quick submit this image to APOD. Um, I'm really hoping it's gonna go through. Maybe it's the one, maybe it's not, we'll see. I kind of just hope it's going to be selected because of the amount of time we spent on it. I mean, 40, 40 plus hours is kind of crazy, so I'm going to give it a shot and we'll see. So I'm going to send them the email and maybe they'll pick it, maybe they won't, we'll see. So we'll see you guys next time and class guys. Wait, update on the APOD submission. It is now featured on the APOD Facebook page as a maybe. This happened once with our image of the Witch Head Nebula, but I'm crossing my fingers that this time it gets selected.